Hello and welcome! In this video series we are going to backtest more than 200 cryptocurrencies in a downtrending market. So the idea is to get a universe of cryptos and apply a trading strategy on them. After 50 days we are evaluating which 5 cryptos did best with this strategy. Then we are taking those top 5 performers and apply the same strategy over the next 30 days. This is our validation period. In the end, we are checking how the strategy was working out for those 5 cryptos. So let's take a look at what exactly we are going to do. As you saw, we are taking a very short look back period. Just 80 days, by the way 80 days because this is the point in time where all cryptos were starting to plunge. But we are taking very granular data. So 80 days, considering a 1 minute time frame, is a huge amount of data. Then we are storing this data in a SQLite database. Why? because the amount of data we are working with is simply too huge to request from an API all the time. Then we are defining a simple strategy, you can test out other strategies, maybe even I will show you other strategies in the future, but for this series we are taking a crossover long only strategy. So let's quickly take a look at the concept again. We are creating a database, this is what we are going to do in this part. And I will also show you how the resampling of open high low closed data works. So how do I resample data from the 1 minute to the 15 minute time frame and so on. In the next part we are doing the backtest, validation and mean return calculation. So definitely stay tuned. To make clear what would be the final goal of this series, we want to have a non-overfitting backtest. We are passing a time interval to see if this interval would end up with a profitable return. There's some knowledge I've covered in previous videos which I won't go too much into detail on. I will link everything you need in the video description so please have a look. But of course if you have any questions feel free to reach out in the comments below. Important disclaimer, all concepts shown in this video and video series are not an investment advice. Trading strategies working in the past are not necessarily indicated for future returns. Ok, let's get started building our crypto price database. We need pandas for data handling. From SQL Alchemy we need create engine to connect to SQLite. From the Python Binance library we need to import the client, which we are also instantiating here. This enables us to pull price data using the Binance API. We are also defining the engine using the create engine function, which we have imported above here and connect to SQLite and give our database a name. I'm just calling that crypto1minute.db. Now I'm going to create a function which is pulling price data for a given symbol, let's say Bitcoin USDT, on the one minute interval and is also going n days or x days back, right? So I'm going to call that get minute data for a given symbol and also for a given starting point. That could be one day back, two days back, or in our use case, 80 days back. Within this function, I'm defining a variable frame, use pandas data frame function on the get historical k lines function from the Python Binance client. This is pulling candlestick data, so open, high, low, close data for provided symbol. So I'm simply taking the symbol which I'm passing to the function whenever I'm calling it. On a given interval, so I'm just fixing it to one minute here. So you can also make that flexible if you're interested in that. But for our use case, we are keeping it at the one minute interval here. And this is going to start at our starting point. So as said, one day back, two days back or 80 days back. This is providing you a lot of data which you don't really need for this use case. So we just need the very first columns. So I'm going to slice the data frame into the first, second, third, fourth and fifth column here. So this is the timestamp. This is the open, high, low, close column. All right. Then I'm naming the columns how they are. So as I said, first one is the date, second one is the open, then the high, the low, 
and the close. Right is simply renaming the columns. Now the date column is containing a Unix timestamp, which I want to transfer to a human readable timestamp. I can do that using pd to date time, apply that on the date column and define the unit as ms. Afterwards, I'm setting the index of that data frame to the date column and replace the current index. And then I'm going to typecast all data, which is coming as string values to floating values. Right, and in the end, I'm returning the frame. So no worries, I'm going to call this function to show you how it is working. So I can call that get minute data on, let's say, Bitcoin, UCT, and go one days back. So I have to provide the time zone here as well, one days ago, UTC. And with that, as you see, we're getting, for just one day, we're getting 1.4K rows here, right? So as we're getting minute interval data for the Bitcoin, and as you see, open, high, low, close data. This is how the function is working. Makes sense, right? The next step would be to change this start value to 80 days, then pass a list of cryptocurrencies, call this function on each of those cryptocurrencies, and import those created tables to our SQL database. Before we are doing that, I want to quickly show you how you are resampling open, high, low, close data. You will need that for the next video. I think it's a good point in time to cover it here. So you have this table, right? This is one minute interval price data, open, high, low, close. Now let's take a very simple example. So instead of one minute intervals, we wanna have a two minute interval. So we have to aggregate the open, high, low, close columns on the two minute interval. Right? Using open, high, low, close data, you have to apply a different logic for each column here. And let me explain you why. So for the open column, if we are aggregating that on the two minute time frame, we are considering those two rows here, right? The open price of the aggregated, so the two minute resample data, would be the open of the very first one minute interval time step, right? So this value would be the open price. So for the open column, we have to take the very first value. For the high column, we have to apply a different form of aggregation. We have to take the max value. So if you are aggregating it over those two rows here, you have to take the max value as the high value. For the low, same logic, but you have to take the minimum value, right? And for the close, you don't have to take the first, but the last value. So if you are aggregating this data frame to the two minute data frame, you are aggregating the open taking the first value, the high taking the max value, the low taking the min value, and the close taking the last value, right? So let me just store that in a variable here, df. And now let me resample. So I want to resample on the, let's, let's take my two minutes here, for the um, two minute time frame using aggregate. And now I'm passing a dictionary of those logics I've just explained. So I'm taking the open and take the first value. scroll a bit down here, taking the high, take the max as the aggregation, take the low and take the min as the aggregation and for the close I'm taking last as the aggregation. Right, and with that, so I missed something somewhere, yeah. Sorry. So now you see, we are getting the open here. 
right? So we have aggregated it on two minutes and now let's take a look. So this is this value on the two minute time frame. This is the open value, right? And take the close, this is this value, all right? So this is how it's working. And this is also how it's working over one hour, right? You just have more rows included here. And this is the resampling logic for open, high, low, close data. I hope this makes sense to you. In case it doesn't, leave me a comment. I'm going to explain that more in depth in the next video. Anyhow, we want to import the data to our database. Therefore, we need a list of symbols, right? So I've stored that on my system. So I'm just reading in the CSV file where I've stored my symbols. I will link all symbols which I'm using here in the video description. So you just have to uh, copy paste that from there, right? So I can show you that as you see 220 symbols, all right? And now I'm just looping over this column here, so symbols name. So I'm taking for symbol in symbols name. So this would give me all the symbols, right? And then I'm just calling our get minute data function on those symbols. Store that somewhere. Let's say, okay, let's take the F. Call our get minute data function on this symbol and go 80 days back. Afterwards, um, using the to SQL function, give the table name. I'm just naming the table after the symbol, which makes sense, right? So we have a database, a crypto one minute, and we have tables, which are simply the symbol names. So I'm naming the table as the symbol name and provide our engine. Running this, I will import a huge amount of data into our crypto one minute database. And as we are taking 220 symbols, this will take hours, right? So this is not going to be very fast and you can just use uh, uh, multiple sessions or let that run overnight. Um, but just in case, I'm going to show you when this loop is crashing so you're going offline or something, how you can check which data is already in your database and what you need to still import here. So let's just manually stop this loop here. All right. So now we're getting keyboard interrupts error here. And now to check which symbols have already been imported, we can just create a variable here imported and use pandas read SQL statement and use select name from SQLite schema where type is a table and also provide the engine. And with that, you will see that these symbols have already been imported and then you can just take your symbols list and run the loop from here on. All right. And yeah, that's it for this video. So I'm excited for the next part. I hope you are as well. From the bottom of my heart, thank you very much for watching and I'm looking forward to see you in the upcoming videos. Bye bye.